Hello there, YouTubers. Welcome to another episode of Dr. Cassette's Workshop. Well, it's a nice and warm and, uh, well, for as long as there are no clouds, also a sunny day. One of the first ones this year, so it would really be a crime to do this all indoors. So we're doing it outdoors. What we're doing has something to do with the thing right there. This is my grandmother's old Epson all-in-one printer. Now she doesn't have a computer, she just uses it to copy things like articles from newspapers and that kind of stuff. But as we all know, these things have a ridiculous lifetime of uh, less, than, uh, less than a year, basically. And this thing is broken. This thing has had it. Let's take a closer look. It's an uh, Epson, as you can see, and uh, yeah, you can you can tell my grandmother used this thing a lot. There used to be a little green label on the start button, which is all rubbed off. As you can see, this uh, has quite some fancy things going on, including this uh, flip-up color display, card reader on the front, and there is the scanner, all that. So. We're going to take a look inside and see if we can find some useful components. Here we go. To open up this precision electronic device, you obviously need some high quality precision tools, which I have prepared right over here. One word of advice, get yourself a big cardboard box so that you can get rid of all the bits and pieces of junk immediately and you don't have them lying around all over your place. So, here we go. First of all, we're going to remove this uh, very high quality plastic cover. Nice shiny plastic. Okay. Got hit by a piece of plastic there. That's not good. Anyway, uh, next step well, I guess if we go <laughs> if we go that fast, we're not going to get anywhere today. So um, let's see. Okay, we're getting somewhere, and we're having some cables in that hinge. Not sure if you can see that. Well, I guess it's not going to matter anyway. That is one extremely high quality ribbon cable there. Can't get that ripped out of there. Anyway, wow, inside of this printer is a mess. This is one of the reasons why these printers don't last very long. They just uh, spray ink everywhere. You can see in the cover, everything's full with ink. You see down there, there's a foam pad that's full with ink. There is a, there is a piece of uh, paper inside of there. Apparently that ripped off at some point. I'm not sure if there are ink cartridges inside of there, but um, anyway, let's continue. Well, I can see some screws but uh, I prefer to use the easy method. Oh, there we have one of the interesting bits apart, control panel. Okay, all the rest sits on a circuit board down in there, so uh, I'm going to be careful with that spot over there, but uh, I have to get it out somewhere, I guess. Well, I guess using a screwdriver is going to be a bit quicker in the end, so let me get one. Well, there we are. There we have all the interesting bits. This used to sit down in there. And uh, this contains all the logic. Power supply is somewhere down in there, buried. Card reader is integrated on that board, which is kind of sad, because I thought 
it might be separate. I might be able to make it work on a standard PC computer somehow. USB jack, for some reason I put that onto, uh, onto a separate board. It's for that, uh, how do they call that? I don't know, bridge something. This is a control panel. It hooks up using uh, a ribbon cable. I uh, well, can't find it now, but uh, there is that. There is a little display, which I'm uh, going to take apart. Let's see if I can uh, get that to do something. And, uh, oh, as for the rest, it's pretty much trash. And uh, it has been ever since it was new. All plastic, as you can clearly see. And uh, in case you've ever wondered where all your ink is vanishing so quickly, well, every time you turn on one of these things, and uh, every time you tell it to do so, uh, these things will do... Um, they'll clean the heads of those cartridges. And in order to do so, it'll go over there, and as you can see, there is a little reservoir down in there. And uh, you can see it looks kind of funny down in there. If I just... Uh, take this knife. As you can see, there is nothing on this knife. It's clean. Just uh, take a reading. It's all dried up, but uh, as you can see, half a millimeter of, uh, not half a millimeter, half a centimeter of ink down in there, all dried up, so that uh, obviously, if that was brand new, I guess that would be the content of, uh, of a whole set of ink cartridges. So that's pretty bad. <laughs> but uh, anyway, there are a bunch of gears in here, but uh, all cheap plastic. Don't think I'll be able to get any interesting mechanical parts out of here, except for that motor, maybe. That actually seems to be a pretty powerful motor right there, so I'm going to take a look at that. But um, well, that really seems to be about it. <laughs> I guess this thing manages to work with just one motor. That would be interesting. I took out the assembly that holds the ink cartridges. And here is something interesting. This is how the printer tells where this assembly is, what position it has. So you can see we have a little optical pickup sensor right there. I don't know. Well, I'm not sure. I don't think it's optical. Actually, it might be magnetical or something. But. Uh, through that groove down there slides this band. As you can see, there it is, goes all the way across. And now this is probably going to look gray on camera. Yeah, it is, I guess. But uh, this is actually, this actually has little fine lines printed on it, vertical lines. They're all just a, a, a fraction of a millimeter wide. There are lines on there, and I guess that's how this thing tells where this assembly is on the track. Pretty interesting. Okay, making some progress, tearing that mechanism apart. As you can see, this is pretty low quality. You can see this, the rubber on this, uh, on this thing here is already all cracked. And uh, have a, some some little holes there, which, as you can see, was leading ink somewhere, and it probably dripped into there. This thing is really a mess. Now, definitely being very very wasteful with your ink. There is the second motor. I did get the first one out. It is a Chinese-made, well, obviously Chinese-made Mabuchi brand, I believe. I think that's their logo, right there, made in China. It doesn't have any specifications on there, just some part numbers. And uh, as you can see, the spindle is coming out on the one end, obviously, but also on the other. And this is a bit more powerful than your typical cassette recorder motor, so this is going to be handy to you, uh, you know, for some mechanical projects, I guess. So I'll be saving that as well as that one. And over here in this uh, gearbox, they are once again using that uh, 
optical or uh, well I think it's optical it, it doesn't seem to be magnetical this optical uh, sensing setup once again one of these sensors this time you can actually see it how this uh, plastic wheel has grooves in it and once again about that little ink reservoir down there well it's not just a hole no there is actually this block of uh, something it's some kind of padding to suck that up so most likely there was even more I mean you can see how this has all turned black and uh, this is about to turn black so the ink that gets sprayed down into the air is being sucked up by this this is ridiculous you can kind of see over here the clean part what kind of stuff we have over there and uh, so you can clearly see this is quite thick this is quite thick and there is even more down there look at that that is about well something between one and a half and two centimeters of uh, foam Here we have the underside of the unit, which does indicate the obvious, that these things don't last very long. And right here, kind of separate in this box, sits the power supply. And here we are, that's basically it. The interesting parts you can find in an all-in-one printer, scanner, copier got two pretty high quality pretty strong motors and the uh, surprise thing is these are actually different from each other they have different part numbers this, uh, I thought they were identical because obviously you're trying to get identical parts to make it cheaper got a lot of screws those are just a few most of them I threw away control panel electronics we've already seen that USB jack power supply and this is most likely going to be useful the way it is I, uh, as you can see it has three leads coming out of there so my guess is it has uh, outputs for 5 volts and 12 volts so that can be used for something the way it is there's a handy little jack on there too this is the scanner and uh, as you can see uh, this is why you can't just take the top part off of the uh, off of the unit and uh, use it separately. Uh, there is uh, this ribbon cable just goes straight into those electronics, and uh, you will need them to uh, to do all the processing. But uh, there is that. This is a little pickup thing, and uh, for as far as I know, and yes, it seems to be that way. It's just a, a long row of LEDs. Yep, you can kind of see them. Little square bits down there. Those are all super bright white LEDs. So maybe able to uh, get those uh, to turn on. That would be kind of uh, interesting. Yeah. It's going to be a little bit complicated, I guess. And there is that. And then, of course, we have a uh, some tiny little motor down in there. Here we have that thing taken out. This is a really, really flat motor. Not sure if it still works because uh, this circuit board was, um, well, <laughs> pull uh, by pulling on the cables, I actually pulled those pins out of the motor. But it seems like the motor windings were still hooked up to those posts. So I just stuffed that thing back into there and maybe it still works. You can see it's uh, some kind of a speed controllable setup. And some gears on it to slow it down. So uh, another interesting part. And here we have the power supply. That's what's inside of that black box. And uh, it is in fact a dual rail power supply. Switch mode, of course. But, amazing thing, Capacitors are still in good condition, and this one is actually a brand name one. It's a Rubicon right there. This one, I think, is some no name thing KMQ or whatever that is supposed to be. There it is. And there we have all the useful parts in one spot. 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, see, I'm going to look up data sheets and uh, take these modules apart and uh, maybe I can come up with something useful that we can actually do with all those junked electronics. I guess most of it is going to be custom built for Epson and totally unusable in, in any other application, but uh, we can never know. And uh, I am interested in that little display and what makes it work. If there was a little controller or something. Maybe I can actually get that thing to display something. That would be kind of cool. Anyway, there we have a big box with a load of junk. That's going to go to the dump. So, there you have it. An Epson all-in-one printer teardown. Thanks for watching and see you again soon. Update. Very unfortunately, I won't be able to use any of these components. Most of all the chips on here are custom-made Epson chips without any data sheets available. There is one on the, uh, on the board that has all the switches on it. Same goes for the display, very unfortunately. Just a tiny little Epson chip on there. No info available whatsoever. That's a shame, because this thing really isn't bad. And uh, as for this thing, it has this uh, unit right there, Realoid. Uh, I guess that's uh, how you're supposed to speak that, made by Epson. Um, the model number kind of tells me that this might be a microcontroller. There are microcontrollers available that end with A85. CA, but uh, no data sheet for E01, once again, unfortunately. Some transistors, and I'll be uh, salvaging those. All the other chips, once again, all custom Epson, except for this one. This right there is a Hynix brand um, 128MB RAM. Not much you can do with that. So, that's about that.